I'm about to reveal the oldest kata in the history of karate, plus show you some intricate details of the original form as it was taught to me by a grandmaster of old school kung fu in China, because that's where it actually comes from, way before the word karate even existed. Check it out. As a lifelong karate practitioner, I've always wondered what the oldest karate kata might be. And the best way to find out is to look at language experts and use the same methods they use when they want to determine what the world's oldest language is. And the answer is to cross compare all the different languages, their grammar and their vocabulary, and see what they have in common. Through that method, you can then trace back the world's oldest language to somewhere around 50,000 years ago in the east of Africa. Now imagine if we use the same method for karate. By looking at all the different styles of karate, is there one kata that seems to be a common thread across the traditional styles, particularly the ones from Okinawa, which is known as the birthplace of karate? And the answer is yes. There are a couple of kata that you find across several different styles, but there is only one that you can find in almost every style of karate. I mean, Uechiryu, Shotokan, Shitoryu, Gojuryu, Ishinryu, Ryueryu, Chitoryu, Wadoryu. I mean, the list just goes on. This one kata exists across all the traditional karate styles. In fact, I had the honor of learning the original form of this kata when I went to China last year to rediscover the roots of karate. After a lot of digging, I managed to find one of the last living masters who still knows this kata. Now, if you wonder why this kata exists in China, then that's because the original name for karate was actually todi, which means Chinese hand. And a lot of the old school katas that we have in karate today were based on the fighting traditions that originally came from China. Obviously, these forms were then modified because the Okinawan masters adapted and changed them to suit their needs. But this one particular kata still exists in China. And when I learned it, I was blown away. You see, the first part of the kata almost looks identical to the way it's performed in most styles of karate to this day. Although the second half of the kata is way more complicated and advanced, which leads me to believe that maybe the old Okinawan pioneers didn't learn the second half or they just dropped it because they wanted to streamline the kata and make it more suitable to achieve their own goals. And the cool thing about this is that this kata is even mentioned in Bubishi, the Bible of Karate, which is karate's most important historical text because it's the oldest written reference to a connection between Okinawa and China that still exists. Moreover, this kata was actually demonstrated by an Okinawan master named Aragaki Seisho at one of the earliest recorded karate demonstrations in Okinawa at the Ochaya Goten, which is a famous park and tea house. And the demonstration was actually for the Chinese Sapposhi, the ships that come and go between Okinawa and China. And the kata that I'm talking about is Seisan or as it's known in Shotokan, Hangetsu, or Seishan, as they call it in Wadoryu. But no matter what you call the kata, one fact remains. It is perhaps the oldest recorded kata that still exists across all styles of karate, not just one particular style. According to some research, this was actually the first kata taught in the Nahate, Shurite, and Tomarite traditions around Okinawa before karate styles even existed. But it was later replaced by other katas that were easier to teach, especially for the school children. And karate was introduced into the school system in Okinawa, and after that it was modernized and sportified and spread to the rest of the world. And now I want to show and explain a couple of technical details from the original Seisan kata so that you can see for yourself how it still connects to the versions we practice today. 
All right, so the first part of the original Seisan Kata that I want to show you is the three steps that you perform immediately at the beginning of the Kata. And of course, this is true for all versions of Seisan, but with some slight variations depending on what style you practice. Now, the most important thing here is what I was taught when it comes to the stance. You see, imagine you're in a horse stance, like you're riding a horse, all right? They call it Ma Bu in Chinese. Now, if you take a step forward, this hourglass step, then you end up with the Seisan stance. This is the original way you're supposed to stand in almost the entire kata. It is very stable. And they told me you should imagine sitting on a stool, right? So you tuck your tailbone in, and then as you're in this stance, you kind of connect your glutes to your abs, and you get this super strong posture, all right? So it's not just about the feet, but it's also about your hips, your core, and your knees, which need this kind of internal tension at all times. Yeah. Now, the moves that you perform with your arms look like this. It's a block, it's a punch, and then you do so sort of like a tensioning sequence. But the weird part is that your passive hand is not at the hip and it's not out here. So in today's Seisan variations, you see either punching with the passive hand out here or with the passive hand at the hip, right? But the cool thing about the original Seisan is that it's right in between those two positions. So the passive hand is like this. Look, like a hikite that you forgot to pull in or like a outside block that you drop down a little bit. And there are actually four ways of generating power in this kata. Floating, sinking, they call it swallowing and spitting. All right, four directions of power that are contained within the Seisan kata. And the important part that I learned here was that you should actually use your full body, your legs and your feet to, to connect everything, right? So you do these three steps that come from here, you block, punch, and actually the punch was not perfectly in the center line. It was like straight out from the shoulder. And a cool thing here is that they told me that there were actually variations of this even in China. So some styles would do a block and punch together, and other variations would be you block and then you pull back and punch. But remember, you don't pull it back all the way. So here, and then tension. So you do those three steps. And of course, in today's different versions of Seisan, some styles have open hands like Wechiryu, other styles pull back all the way, like Hangetsu or Seishan in Wadoryu or Shorinryu. And some styles like Gojuryu do this kind of technique instead. But they all revolve around this same backbone. So those were the first three basic steps that you see in all versions of Seisan still today. Now let's look at the second major part of Seisan that I want to share today. So when you turn around in the kata, today you see these kinds of movements that go up and down, like kind of scissoring motions. And it's different depending on what style you practice, obviously, but the main idea is the same. And in the original version of Seisan, it looks like this. Remember the stance, right? Now what happens is 
you kind of almost grab with your front hand. Then the other hand comes up this way, like this, here and this way. So look, this is how it evolved, right? Here, here, instead of here as we see today in different styles. So the idea is that you're grabbing somebody's hand or wrist and then you shoot up, <coughs> breaking their elbow with the other hand, right? This way. And it's done 45. So it's not straight back like all Saison versions today, but it's actually to the corners. <laughs> Actually, there is another kind of lost move in this sequence of the kata that I haven't found in any of the modern versions of Seizan in karate. And it looks like this. All right, just this weird move seems to have been dropped from the karate versions of Seizan. And the explanation that I got for this move it's pretty interesting. Imagine somebody is dragging my arm, right? They're pushing my elbow, trying to bring me away. Now what I do is I just shoo, go around and I counter that arm drag. And it works surprisingly well. Here's my elbow. I can return it like that to the end. You go over and return it. A third sequence that I want to share from Seisan is the classical mawashi uke. Well, some, in some katas it looks like this, in some styles, right? Other styles it looks like this, or even in a stable shikodachi type stance. But the main principle is always the same across all karate styles. And the original version looks like this. Here, super small. And it's actually a osai uke, a pressing block down with this part of my wrist. As I block, I push down this way. And you actually move into a cat stance at that point. So it's not just this super big stable stance, but it's also the cat stance. And in another part of the kata, you got the, the shikodachi stance, and you even got the Zenku Tsudachi stance. And of course, this part is what you still see in, let's take uh, the Gojuryu Kata version of Seisan, for example. At the end, you do the kick and you go like this, or like this, or like this. That's actually also done 45 degrees, but down in the original Seisan Kata. And then you pull back and you strip like this. And this, of course, is exactly what the Uechiryu version of Seisan does. Grabbing with one hand and the other hand is like this or like this. So, if we look at the different versions of Seisan practiced today across all the karate styles, we can see that the, the beginning of the kata and the middle of the kata looks pretty much the same, but then more and more variations start popping up and some techniques have been dropped other techniques have been added, but in all of them, the essence is still right there.